A major announcement from the White House. The Trump administration planning to bring home thousands of troops from Afghanistan. Now, this after a proposed peace deal with the Taliban. A new report saying the number of U.S. forces in Afghanistan could drop to between eight and 9,000. After all is said and done, is this the right move? Who better to ask than retired Marine Staff Sergeant Johnny Joey Jones, who suffered severe injuries from a Taliban-related uh, strike, an IED strike, during his last combat tour in Afghanistan. That was nine years ago. Staff Sergeant, good to see you. Thank you for your service and, of course, for your sacrifice. Do you, can we trust Thank the you. Taliban? No, we can't trust the Taliban. Uh, but are we playing the cards that were dealt? Probably. We're 19 years into this war, three administrations in a row have made a promise and then seemingly not kept it. And I think we're playing as much politics as we are uh, strategy at this point. And, uh, and so perhaps this is the, the path we have in front of us. Uh, Joey, is that, I think the question is more, can we, can we trust them more than the alternatives to control this, this region or parts of this region? It seems like we're very quick to like, you know, and whether this was the Soviets or, or us and dictators like uh, Gaddafi or, or even Saddam Hussein, like these might have been the best of the worst alternatives for, for control in these areas and stability. Is now, is now Taliban, what we're going to have to just, is that the best case at this point? Or who could be either installed or put in or who could be in charge of this area? Well, it depends on what the alternative is, right? I mean, is the alternative another 9-11? Is the alternative losing a foothold in intelligence and deterrence? We, that's what we're told. Can we uh, verify that? That I'm not so sure about. If the alternative are the two soldiers that were killed this week, of course that's not worth uh, anything other than actually going in and winning this war. But the president's words today were pretty obvious. He said, I could win this war if I wanted to. Which tells us if that's not what he's doing, then what he is doing isn't winning the war, it's withdrawing. Um, we have to believe that Afghanistan is a sovereign country and we give them that opportunity. If they want these peace talks and our withdrawal is a part of that, I think that needs to be a part of the conversation. But even the Afghan government is saying they don't trust the Taliban or this strategy. Mm. Um, so it looks to me more political than strategy. I just don't know that there is a better strategy at this point. Yeah, I mean, and on that, Joey, look, ta uh, Afghanistan for years was called the graveyard of empires, right? Because successive powers <laughs> yeah. would go in and spend time, money, and energy and come out worse for the wear, and Afghanistan would be exactly the same. We're 18 years into this. The original point of this was that the Taliban sheltered and harbored al-Qaeda on the eve of the 9-11 attacks. Um, and then the, the secondary rationale was, exactly. well, if they're a failed state, anybody could go in there. But the fact is there are a lot of failed states around the world that we don't then send in troops. We, we monitor and we are, you know, we keep tabs. I just think, and, and you've been there too, I mean, at some point, are we supposed to be there forever? I don't think you would say that, right? So at some point you really do have to go, well, maybe the best uses of our energies is not there. There are a lot of failed states around the world. There aren't a lot of failed states where when we're not there, Russia is, or when we're not there, someone's planning an attack on our country. So, I mean, you have to put it into context for what it is. Yes, we did go into Afghanistan originally to seek and find and kill Osama bin Laden. We, we, we didn't have a war with Afghanistan. They were providing refuge to an international terrorist network, which was much more uh, active against us, called al-Qaeda. So the point is we're not getting information from our government we're getting talking points and political mm. rhetoric to win campaigns that's the problem i have if you can show me a strategy that keeps our country as safe or safer and has zero troops in afghanistan i'm hundred percent behind it but if you're trying to be the first one to pull troops out before a democratic nominee tulsi gabbard does it then that's politics and we need to call it for what it is um, Joe, and that's my concern. Just out of curiosity, what is the one thing that you can share with us as civilians about your time there, about your service there, that you honestly just wish the public knew that has absolutely nothing to do with absolutely. politics? Absolutely. Listen, Afghanistan is set up by boundaries to be a failed state, right? There's a, there's a country border in the middle of a mountain range, and there's a neighbor called Pakistan that has no interest in Afghanistan obtaining true sovereignty. Mm. On top of that, it's a tribal country. Their idea of nationalism is not the United States coast to coast, sea to shining sea idea of nationalism. A neighbor will sell out a neighbor from a neighboring village to get their property. It's just a part of their culture. And I'm not passing judgment. I'm saying probably the centralized government of Afghanistan will never have the type of control and sovereignty that we think you know they should have or should want and that will always be a part of it but you know we got started in this country because the Soviets wanted to be there 
Uh, so the geopolitical parts of this war go well beyond what is Afghanistan. And those problems aren't going away if we have 9,000 troops there, non-troops there, 900. Those problems will be there. And so it's diplomacy on a broader scale. They're in the crosshairs, and they, to date, haven't done enough yeah. to help themselves out. Super insightful. Joey, a, a quick question. Look, it, it seems the overriding reason we're in countries like Afghanistan is to fight terrorism over there before it comes over here. If we continue That's, to pull troops yeah. out, d don't you think that increases the odds of having another 9-11 or similar over here? Well, it just depends. Where is our intelligence? Do we keep Bagram and Kabul? Do we have a place to do counter strikes? Do we have partners we can trust? Um, is Pakistan opening the back door or are they closing it? Those are all questions that need to be answered that dictate what troops in Afghanistan truly mean. I'll tell you, we never left Germany, we never left Japan, and they're pretty uh, docile places these days. So there is something to be said for contingents, keeping an eye on things or being a part of the solution. But if those contingents are simply sitting around waiting to get shot or blown up, well, then we're not doing a whole lot. So there's just a lot of questions that don't get answered because a campaign gets in the way too often.